Hello, church. We're going to be looking at Exodus 12 in today's devotional. And it may seem strange to go that far back into the Old Testament when we're trying to focus here on Passion Week. But so much of what Jesus accomplished in Passion Week is a fulfillment of the prophecies and the pictures of the Old Testament. And so it helps us to go all the way back so many years before Christ and see the plan that God was fulfilling even in Passion Week. So let's go back to visit Israel in Egypt. Now you may not ever have thought about this before, but Israel was not an established nation before they were enslaved. It started with just one large family. But the nation of Israel was birthed out of hundreds of years of oppression in Egypt. But at the appointed time, in the wisdom and will of God, the power of Egypt was crushed by the greater power of God. Plague after plague demonstrated that Egypt was no match for God's power, but Pharaoh's heart and heart kept opposing what God was doing. And this takes us to Exodus 12 and the first ever Passover. It's in the last, this one is the last of 10 plagues and the one that finally broke Pharaoh's will, causing the release of Israel from slavery. And the chapter concludes gloriously with the Exodus. This particular plague is designed to claim the life of the firstborn in every household in the land of Egypt. But as you read the account in Exodus 12, you, you see God provides a way of deliverance. A lamb was to be sacrificed in substitution for the, for the household's firstborn. Then, some of that blood from the lamb was to be spread on the doorposts and the lintel above the door. And when the Lord carried out this plague, he would see the houses marked by blood and pass over those households, sparing the firstborn. And just pause there for a moment and imagine what being in one of those houses must have been like. You may have heard cries from neighboring houses that were not covered in the blood. You may have cowered in fear, wondering how the blood of a lamb would be enough to spare your child. Would the blood really do the trick? Would you be safe and would you be covered by it? But when morning comes, we discover that, that the blood was enough. Because of the blood placed on their doorposts, God passed over that firstborn. And through the power of that same blood, they were redeemed out of their slavery. Friends, we too, we too were born into slavery, the slavery of sin. And we know that the wages of sin is death just like the death that was visited on the firstborn in every household. In our strength, there is nothing we can do about the sin we were born into and the death that comes as a result. We either need to be delivered or we need to face the plague. Aren't you glad this Passion Week? Aren't you glad to be able to say that we are delivered people? We are covered by the blood of a better Passover lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And the power of Christ's blood not only delivers us from the plague of death, but purchases us as God's chosen people. He is our substitute and God was pleased to crush him so he could redeem us. And just as Israel was not a nation prior to her deliverance from slavery, we are told in 1 Peter that we too were once not a people, 
but now we are God's people. Praise God. Moses commands the people of Israel to celebrate this feast of unleavened bread annually so that Israel would remember their identity had been secured through redemption, to never forget that. And it reminded them that they were called to be a holy people, living distinctly God-fearing lives when compared to the nations around them. But with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the blood of the Lamb had to be spilt year after year. Astonishingly, the blood of the Lamb of God only needs to be spilled once for all. When Israel celebrated Passover, they were celebrating something God was doing over and over again. But when we celebrate the, the Lord's Supper, when we recognize the significance of Passion Week, we are celebrating something that is finished. Following the death of the Lamb of God, no more sacrifices are needed. It is finished, completely done. And so when we look in verses 27 and 28 of Exodus 12, we see Israel's response to all that Moses had said. And it's instructive to us. Here's what it says. And the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Then the people of Israel went and did so. As the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. How did they respond? They worshiped and then they obeyed. Friends, our sin is forgiven once for all. We are covered by the blood of the Lamb. May God's Spirit stir in our hearts so that our response to that is worship, gratitude overflowing in worship. And may He empower us to go and to obey. Folks, let's just, let's pursue gratitude to such a degree that it overflows into obedience. And may we never grow tired of remembering His powerful, once for all substitutionary death until he comes. Amen.